Judge, I apologize about me. We were having some issues over here at the time with the computer. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. All right, Mia, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. When a child is brought to a facility, you'll see a judge within two days. I've decided whether to keep you here. Whether you see if I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to me silent. You have a right to an attorney. And you're 16 years old. You were here in February for domestic. Mom said that she had taken your phone away for discipline. She was sitting in the driver's seat. And you jumped on her, started hitting her in the chest, making it difficult to breathe. Pinned her back against the steering wheel, then went back to the house. You pushed her down while trying to get your phone. So you brought her over here. So I think I remember you. Then I released you. And then I guess on Friday, 4th P, you responded domestic. Mom says she'd take your phone again. As punishment for the fast, past family violence case, you were released on March 2nd, since you were level one over three days. Mom and her daughter went to get something to eat. You run an electronic monitor while you're out. Receive, they found out that you took, you got your phone back and started posting social media. When they came back, you ran to the room, locked the door. Mom and sister had to force their way in. Mom asked sister to watch you while she went to call us, the probation officer. So you threw a water bottle at your sister and hit her with a closed fist. Well, the answer is that, Mom. Actually, here? Dad's here, Your Honor. Okay, hi, Dad. Oh. You still you still live with Mom? Are you all still together? Uh, no, sir. No, okay. Uh, well, um, here's the thing, Mia. We had a conversation last time, and I just I thought it meant something. Show me that you could behave, but. There's something about social media that's so great that you keep on wanting to come back to jail. So, I mean, if that's what you want, then that's what you get. So I'm going to go and detain you for now. We'll review this. We'll see your 10-day hearing and decide uh, whether I'm going to release you or not. Uh, rolling your eyes like you're surprised, but what do you think would happen? I mean, you had the rules. I told you at the last detention hearing that if I'm going to let you go, your mom sets the rules. She's the one that pays for the phone. She decides whether you have or not, and you said you understood, and then you can't follow those rules. And I told you that I expected your mom to call us and let us know if you're breaking the rules. And she did exactly what she promised me she would do. You did exactly opposite of what you promised me you would do. And there's a consequence. You know, there's no situation so bad that you can't make it worse. And when you dug yourself to a hole, stop digging. So be here, get level one else. I'm sorry? My sister put her hands on me first, but they didn't, they didn't arrest her. Hold on, please. Let, let's bring that up later. You and I can talk about that, please. Yeah, talk to your attorney about that. If you have a question for me, I'll answer the question. But, you know, it's stop. Here's the thing. Don't make yourself a victim. All right. You're blaming the police for not arresting somebody else when you did wrong. Focus on what you did, the decision that you made, and figure out how to make it better. Be the kind of person that you want. It, that you want. Well, treat other people the way you want them to treat you. You can make decisions to make your situation better, or you can make decisions to make your situation worse. But it's ultimately, it's up to you. But it's not somebody else's fault that you made bad decisions. All right. Thank you, Mia. Devonta Lindsay. All right, Mr. Lindsay, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. When a kid's brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. And if you cannot afford one, we'll provide one for you. We have appointed Ms. Susan Weehe. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so Devante, you're 60, you're almost 17. Well, you got a case, case pending back in September of last, no, let's see, March, May of last year, Arlington PD referred you for burglary of a building. Apartment manager reported a burglary at one of the apartments. Somebody kicked in the patio door, went in, took several items, videos, seven suspects, two are identified, and they identified you from a previous arrest. So we let you out in September. Arlington PD referred you for criminal mischief. Saying about 3.30 on the 15th of July, went to an apartment complex. Somebody came home, saw two broken windows, 
She suspects her granddaughter's friend broke the window because he was mad at Sabrina. So during the conversation, you admitted breaking out one of the windows to the apartment and the restitution is $297.96 for the window. And now on Friday, Arlington were dispatched to a residence. You went to ex-girlfriend's house and you were upset with the breakup. Mom initially opened the front door, told you you had to leave when you said you need to talk to her daughter. When she closed the door, you went back, jumped the fence, started banging on the back door, kicked the door in. When she went to push you back out, you punched her in the chest, knocking to her ground. <clears throat> Your mother and stepfather arrived shortly after. And stepdad restrained you until the police arrived. While being escorted to the curb to conduct the investigation, you became combative, resisted. Charged with burglary of habitation, criminal mischief, and resisting. And you've got two pending cases, and you're smoking weed while you have pending cases. So, Devonta, I don't think you're doing anything right, to be honest with you. I don't think you're really worried about the courts. I think you're just going to do what you're going to do. <clears throat> and because of that, because you want to live this thug life, and I'm going to go ahead and keep you here to keep you safe and keep other people safe from you. Thank you, Devonta. Thank you, oh, you have your hand raised. If you have a question for me, I'll answer your question. If you want to tell me something, your attorney does not want you to talk. So do you have a question for me or do you want to tell me something? I want to tell you something. No, you don't want to tell me anything. No, I'm, 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 you. No, I'm telling you, you don't want to tell me anything. Nothing can help your situation. I made my decision. Your pattern of behavior tells me that you obviously treat women very poorly. And you want to use physical force and it's just very dangerous when you're breaking into people's houses. They would have had every right to shoot you dead on the spot. And you're just lucky that they didn't. So do you have a question for me or do you just want to tell me something? Uh, I didn't punch her at all. We're going to talk later, okay? Yes. I just, Devante, just just so you know, burg of habitation, secondary felony, if this is an adult case, you could do up to 20 years in prison for this. All right? I just want to make sure you're aware that this is serious. All right. Thank you, Devante. Thank you, Arnold. Right. Decorian Montague. I'm present, Your Honor. Oh, hello, Ms. Keenan. All right, Mr. Montague, I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10-day detention hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you in custody or to release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have now been here for about 200 days. Ms. Keenan, this will be one of the higher ones on the list. Wait, we have certification coming up this we week. We have no? certification on Thursday, Your Honor, in person, um, and the state and I are ready. Okay. If... For some reason, I don't certify Mr. Montague. It will it'll be one of the higher priority cases to try at the beginning. Just... I understand, Your Honor. And he he's on okay. level one acceptable. He had been on level one O, um, fell, I believe, on Friday, according or Thursday or Friday, according to Courtney. Um, and he has not made it back up to level one O. Okay. Sure. All right. Well, Mr. Montague, this is, I remember this one, this is a homicide about the so like forty dollars in weed, I think. It's a drug deal gone. Yeah, forty dollars in weed. So you're not level one outstanding, given the seriousness of the offense and given your history. I'm very concerned. If I was to let you go, there'd be a danger to the public. There'd be a danger to you, and that I'm actually afraid that you may not come back to court. So I'm going to go and detain you. I will see you. I think on Thursday. That's correct. I decide whether to give up my jurisdiction and transfer you to an adult criminal court. Or if I retain my jurisdiction, and it's also called certifications, how people know it, certify as an adult, um, I'll just decide whether we can help you at juvenile or we need to move you to the adult system, okay? All right, Mr. Montague, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll see you, on, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, thank you, Ms. Keenan. Jocelyn Salidana. Nope. Jocelyn Salidana. All right, Jocelyn, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. The law says when a child's... Oh, you've been here for 10 days, so I'm reviewing your case, deciding whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to attorney. Mr. Sierra is your attorney. <clears throat> All right, Jocelyn, you are now 17 years old. You're referred as a runaway, 
Um, Get a pending case for assault bodily injury, police were dispatched to Behavioral Hospital. Another, all right, back in February, I ordered a placement search. We did the psychological evaluation. It is due today. And your level of outstanding. Good. Okay, Jocelyn, let me, so you know, we're, we, when the psychological evaluation, we're looking to see if placement is an option, okay? And so that's kind of where we're at. Unfortunately, because probably the snowstorm had something to do with it, that we couldn't get the, uh, the psychological back. So that should be in today. We'll have more guidance. Unfortunately, with the, the requirement to get you on a 10-day hearing to see me is the same day as reports do. There's not much I can do. I'm still waiting for that report, okay? So I'm going to detain you for now. All right, I want to figure out what we do. I don't want you here any longer than you have to, but you know, I, I'm, I apologize for the timing on this one. Okay, it's not really your fault. It's not your fault at all. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just kind of the way the calendar works. Okay, all right. so just hang tight. Keep up the level one outstanding. I'm glad you are. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Yes. I wanted to take the moment uh, to question um, Miss Selena Aguirre. I was told that we were looking also for placement locations. Do we have we identified some locations? Mr. Sarah, they need a psychological for that. So that process hasn't begun yet. Well, the process begun. I were the psychological, and he's performed it. We're waiting on the uh, report. Okay, that is correct. I'm right. covering, Judge. I just wanted to be sure, Judge. Yeah, no, we're working. It's not her fault at all. There's nothing Jocelyn could do. She's. I was just. It's unfortunate that she has to sit here waiting. But I think with the ice storm, with the delays and the stack up of kids, it's just, you know, it, it's unfortunate. It bothers me, but there's, I mean, there's nothing I could do about it either. I understand. Thank you, Judge. Quinton Sales. All right, Mr. Sales, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you or really see if I keep you. You'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. See, it's been 10 days, so I'm deciding whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge. I'm sorry, in another 10 days. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. Mr. Adonijia is your attorney. All right, we found a place in Canyon State in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's already been ordered there, Judge. I'm sorry? It's already been ordered to go there. Right. I think we're just waiting on transport. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. When I'm going to let you know, Kenyon State is actually a really good program. I really like it. But it's also a program that will let you succeed and it will let you fail. Okay? So it's really up to you when you go there. If you go there and you succeed, great things happen. If you go there and cause problems and act a fool, they will fail you. And you'll come back and you'll talk to me. And we'll, And really, if I'm so familiar with Kenyon State that if you get discharged from there, then that tells me a whole lot of information. That means there's really not much anything we can do to help you. Okay, so you've got your attorney worked out a deal for this great opportunity for you. Don't waste it. Don't burn this. Okay, you kind of want a lottery ticket on this one. All right, Quentin. Quentin, don't come back. The judge is telling you, don't come back. Yes, yeah, sir. Quentin. That's the thing. You go there and you succeed. You will never see me again. But if you go there and you cause problems, you'll see me, and it's going to be a very uncomfortable conversation. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Anichi. Jason Snyder. Yeah, I did want to let you know on this case, we have the victim, uh, Mr. Unruh, is present. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Snyder. I'm Judge Kim. Yeah. This is a detention hearing. When a child is brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. So. You started when you were 10 years old with an assault public servant. And 11 years old, about a year, almost exactly to the day. And another assault public servant. We let you out. At this point, you are 13 years old. You have a stolen car. Case which you got probation for. We let you out. And 
Three months later, he picked up an aggravated assault with a family member, which was dismissed. But another aggravated assault with a family member with a deadly weapon, which you're placed on probation for. But while the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on a family member was pending, but before you got probation, you get arrested for another aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Then two days after you get probation, you get arrested for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle and burglary of a building. And then a week later, you, I guess you get out and a week later, you get arrested for evading arrest with a vehicle. And you were let out a week later, you get arrested for burglary of a building and you're committed to TJJD. So TJJD felt like you're rehabilitated, place you release you on parole. So now on Friday, about 1230 PD, Fort Worth PD received an activation on a stolen vehicle. It was tracked, the police units were dispatched over and they dispatched your house. When the vehicle started back out, they blocked it in and you were the driver. When the victim made the scene, he said that you were one of two people involved in a vehicle theft of the vehicle the day before. The report said that the victim was trying to sell his car and you and a female came to look at it and they locked the owner out of the car and drove away. He was 100% sure you're the same person. And in fact, you're wearing the same shirt. Well, ACN looks like TJJD regrets having paroled you because they're gonna issue a warrant for you and try and revoke your parole. And so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna detain you because I think that you really shouldn't have been in parole in the first place, but that wasn't my decision to make. So, but they chose to parole you. You passed their tests, but now you're back in Tarrant County with a new Tarrant County case. Mr. Snyder, I see that your hand is raised. If you have something, you have a question for me, I don't mind answering it. If you have something to tell me, uh, I don't I don't think your attorney wants to see you to say anything. So do you have a question for me or do you want to tell me something? A question. Okay, what's your question? Do you think it's possible that I can be released on a monitor because I didn't be charge? Yeah, it is absolutely possible. I'm not going to do it. Your history is so bad. I don't think, I mean, I'm the one that committed you and I don't think TJJD should have paroled you, but they did. And so if anything, you should learn that when you're in Tarrant County on parole, that you got lucky and that Judge Kim wouldn't have paroled you, but you should have done everything right because you got that second chance from TJ, Texas Juvenile Justice Department now you're dealing with me again. And it's just like it was last time that if you're causing these problems, you know I'm gonna detain you just like I did last time, all right? So if you don't wanna be detained, stop breaking the law, allegedly. All right, thank you, Mr. Snyder. Maya Watson. Your Honor, the mom just texted me saying that um, she walked away from the camera because she has a uh, crying toddler in the background, and she was uh, removed from the, the Zoom. Okay. You know, these parents should show up in person. We give them the opportunity to show up on Zoom, but if they can't make arrangements for everything else, I just don't even, I mean, I appreciate you. I'm not upset with you, Mr. Bickerson, but it's like, I don't know, all these parents expect us just to cater to their own individual needs, and it's just not the way court works. Yes, you're so, all right, Amaya, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. The law says when a child's brought to our facility, you have to see a judge within two days. I've decided whether to keep you in custody or to release you. If I keep you, you will see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to attorney. Miss Mills is your attorney. Hi. All right, so on Friday, good morning, Amy. Morning. <laughs> Friday, about 10 o'clock, 14 BD, dispatched to a domestic. Mom was holding you down when police got there. She said that you became upset and told when she told you not to leave the apartment. So you packed a backpack, started to walk out. Mom stopped you. Then you swung at her, but missed. There was a fight in the process. She was kicked in the stomach twice, bitten on the arm, and scratched. She was six months pregnant and advised the police that she's going to the doctor to make sure that the baby was okay. Then we report numerous runaways and defiant behavior that's escalating. So. Yeah, Maya, I'm not comfortable releasing you back in the home. If you're willing to not only put your mother at risk, but also your future sibling at risk, 
then I just think it's a dangerous situation. I'm going to calm things down. I'm going to tap the brakes, figure out what's exactly happening. We'll see you in, at the 10-day hearing. I'll decide whether or not to release you then. But it's going to, a large part, depend on your behavior level. If you can't behave here, if you're going to be defiant, if you're not going to follow the rules, if you're going to insist on doing what you want to do, you're not getting out of here. You'll actually go to TJJD and this is a pregnant person. Mr. Reed, are you here? I saw you earlier. Yes, Judge. What is, I can't remember the level of offense, assault a pregnant person. I think it's third degree, isn't it? It is, Your Honor. Okay, right. All right. So, yeah, if this, Amaya, if this was an adult case, you could go to prison for up to 10 years and it doesn't even have to harm the baby. It's just the fact that you, you create a contact that caused pain. That's enough. Um, this is not an adult case, but you could still go to TJJD uh, until they felt like you were behaving. So if you're going to do what you're going to do and not care about what other people say or what the adults say or tell you what to do, um, you'll never get out of Kimbo. Have your case. You'll end up going to TJJD. If you continue it there, they'll just keep you there all the way until your 18th birthday. Or you can just decide one day while you're here at Kimbo, just follow the rules, do the right thing and do what you're supposed to do and be a 14 year old girl. And then you get out and you never see me again. So it's really up to you if you want to decide to do it sooner or later, <clears throat> but one day you will. So my, I hope that you start making good decisions. All right, that will conclude detention docket for today. Uh, thank you everyone for being here and we will see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Judge.